Hello, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Sophie. Let's talk about some books, shall we? Biblio Sophie. Specifically, I want to talk about some short books because it is September and I'm going to attempt to take part in Shorty September, hosted, proposed by Pastori Time. I'll link to that channel and to the prompt also specifically for Shorty September. In short, pardon the sort of pun, it is to read short books. What does a short book mean? Kind of whatever you want it to be, and I'm actually going to further expand for my own self what short means, uh, but you know, something in the 100 to 200 pages, whatever you want to do. Uh, they propose a bunch of prompts, I think there are 12 in total to fill. I'm going to try probably to do some of them, but I'm also just kind of going to read some short books. I have some that I've been meaning to get to anyway, and I think you can do what you want. I do definitely encourage you to watch the video because A, it gives you a bunch of information, but also because it's very delightful. And the names of the prompts are very punish around, um, punny, I guess, uh, around different shorts. And it's charming. So today I thought I would give you some recommendations for short books that I know and like and talk about some of the books that I'm thinking of doing myself. Reading, I guess, rather than doing. Let's be a bit more specific with our language. For the purpose of this video and my recommendations, I'm only going to recommend to you books that I happen to have physical copies of because I needed a limiting factor. Uh, so there are many more short books than the ones I'm going to talk about, of course, and there are many more short books that I know and love and would recommend, but this one's just going to be stuff that I happen to pull from my shelves that I noticed on my shelves and recommend. All right, without further ado, I think these are all in proper um, alphabetical order, but let's see. First up is Une Gourmandise by Muriel Barberi. She is the author also of The Elegance of the Hedgehog, which I think is more famous and also very lovely, but a little longer. This gets translated to Gourmet Rhapsody in English, and um, it's about a restaurant critic sort of faced with his own mortality and contemplating life, the senses, joy, enjoyment of things, sensuality. Um, it's, it's very kind of esoteric and lovely, it takes place in Paris and is very kind of a certain kind of Parisian. Um, so if you're looking for kind of a nice vibe, I recommend this one. Definitely vibey, but less nice. But a book I really love is Natasha Brown's Assembly. This came out a few years ago and is quite popular on the internet with good reason. It's very short, but packs quite a punch. It's about a very kind of high achieving black woman who uh, in Britain who is invited to her white boyfriend's family weekend and is grappling with a lot of issues of her place in the world, class, race, and then also just her own past, future, body. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to let it be super cryptic. Um, I was really looking forward to this one coming out. Read it when it did. Really enjoyed it. And if you haven't gotten around to it, I think it's a really, really good one to read for a short book. Next up is The Hearing Trumpet by Lenora Carrington. I haven't talked about this book that much this year. If you were watching my channel last year, you heard me talk about it several times. I goddamn love this book. Uh, it is, I think liking this book is part of my identity online, it seems. Um, this is about an elderly woman who is sent to a, a home for old ladies and chaos ensues. And I'm going to leave it at that also, I'm going to leave it at a very cryptic 
uh, mystery there. It's very funny, very biting, sometimes a little horrific, very weird, surreal, and also really deals with autonomy, how we treat others, especially how we treat older people, how we treat older women, um, freedom, choice. Yeah, I love this book and I haven't talked about it in a while. The next book I'm going to recommend is Gigi by Colette. This I haven't read in a long time, um, but it is about Gigi, our title character, who is in training to be basically a high-class courtesan. So she's learning how to dress and shop and eat and just be a proper uh, young woman about town. Um, one of the prompts for the challenge is a film or a book that was made into a film and this was made into a film. It stars Audrey Hepburn and Maurice Chevalier. I haven't seen that film in a very long time. I have no idea if it holds up, but I'm sure it has pretty costumes at the very least. I'm also pretty certain it has one of the more horrifying songs in the Chevalier archive, which is um, Thank Heavens for Little Girls or Thank Heaven. I don't know how many heavens there are. Thank Heaven for Little Girls is real creepy but this one this one's fun this one's a fun one if you want uh, the next one I'm going to recommend is also less fun it is Rachel Cusk's second place I think this is probably my favorite Cusk I'm not at all a completionist but I've read a few of her books and I think this one packs the most concise punch for me uh, this is about a middle-aged woman who has a second place as part of her home, not empire, what's the word I'm looking for? She has a home and she has a smaller second place next to it, basically, in which, where she invites artists to stay. And she invites an artist that she admires and is kind of obsessed with in weird ways to stay there and again chaos ensues a lot of interpersonal chaos um this is in a sort of cuskian fashion very much about women's place women's creativity the freedom allowed for women to exist and grow and thrive and create in the world um wounds and trauma yeah it also packs quite a punch and um justice for tony that's a reference by the way the next one i'm going to recommend is dostoevsky's the gambler this one's about a young uh tutor so not extremely high class um who is a tutor for a higher class family who's also kind of in the throes of a pretty raging gambling addiction and increasingly raging. It's very much about class mobility and immobility, uh, jealousy, um, obsession, addiction. And it's a good short Dostoevsky to have. Uh, this particular edition has a couple of other short uh, stories, including Babak which is quite short if memory serves, and I remember really liking it. If you happen to have your uh, hands on it, I mean, it's also, I'm sure, online because it's no longer in copyright, but it's only about 20 pages, and um, it takes place in a graveyard, and it's very weird. I should reread it, actually, because uh, I remember really liking it. The next one is going to be sort of a generalized and specific at once. Annie Arnaud has many, many short uh, books that would fall very easily into uh, a short September book 
sort of challenge. So there are many of them. Pick yours. I'm going to specifically recommend Une Femme, which I think in English is a woman's story. I'll have the translated versions uh, also in the video description, as I tend to do. Um, and this is one that I don't hear people talk about as much. It's one of her earlier ones, and it's about her mother. It's sort of a biography of her mother, and through that, a commentary on a woman's history and growing up, and then her own, of course, relationship to her mother. Uh, it's a very slim one that I really liked when I read it. More women. Um, that's not shocking. Elena Ferrante's The Days of Abandonment. This, the English copy is translated by Anne Goldstein, excuse me. Uh, this is a really great shorter standalone Ferrante. It is about a woman who has just been left by her husband and over the course of increasingly deranged days, um, things get really, really wonky for her physically, personally, interpersonally, psychologically, uh, as she deals with grief, jealousy, delirium, you know, a lot of breakup feelings, but also a lot of self-analysis feelings, and then things coming from the outside. Uh, this is a really, really good, in my opinion, Ferrante introduction. If you've never read any Ferrante, this one's a fantastic one. Uh, if you don't want to dive into reading something like the 2,000 pages that is represented by the Neapolitan Quartet, for instance, um, I highly recommend this one. More weird shit. Sweet Days of Discipline by Flor Yegi. I have the English version, and I read it in the English version, which is translated from the Italian by Tim Parks. Ooh, this smells heavily like perfume, because um, I used this summer as a paper bookmark, excuse me, a um, perfume tester, and wow, whew, pun gent. Very nice. I read this a month or so ago, and I have a vlog about it. This takes place in a girls' boarding school in Switzerland, and it's about obsession, growing up, loss of innocence, relationships between girls, relationship to our origins. It's very weird. I, um, it was weirder than I thought it was going to be, and I wasn't completely sure what to make of it. I enjoyed it a lot, and it's a very fast read. But it was a lot, honestly, like wackier and weirder. And it's very, very dark in a way that pleased me. Um, but yeah, very interesting book that I'm sure you've seen floating around the internet as well. My next recommendation is Nella Larson, Passing. And I'm also actually going to add to this recommendation a book that I don't own a physical copy of, which is Quicksand. Uh, Passing is about two black women in uh, the 20s, um, one of whom is passing as white. They're both light-skinned and they have known each other. They kind of re-encounter each other and their fates are kind of twined over and over again. So it's very much about um, race, racial identity, uh, belongingness, um, all of community, you know, a lot of things uh, related to this. This is a pretty um, beloved book, I think, in these parts of booktube, and with good reason. It's very, very good. Quicksand, I hear a little bit less about. Um, oh, also, this was made into a movie. So that is another movie book. Uh, Quicksand deals with much of the same topics because it also follows a uh, biracial woman, lighter-skinned woman, much as Nella Larson herself was, um, who also has to deal with her 
place in the world and more actually in that book about passing as black um, how is she perceived in different uh, communities and both are excellent I'm gonna recommend a Clarice Lispector if you follow this channel you know that I have been reading a lot of Clarice Lispector and love her I'm going to recommend Agua Viva. The English translation is by Stefan Tobler. This is a weird one. All the Spectre kind of is. What is this about? Making art, attempting to eke out an existence, creativity, life. Um, <laughs> I'm being relatively obscure, but it kind of, it's not about much of anything. It's a long sort of philosophical uh, stream, Agua Viva. One of the prompts is about a body of water on the cover. This doesn't count because there's no actual picture really, but I'm going to make it count because water is in the title so i if somebody gives you trouble send them to me i think this, this could count for the prompt of i think this dolphin shorts um a book with a cover that has a body of water and maybe there are other editions that do actually so yes i'm keeping it pretty obscure in terms of what it's about but it's it's like many clarice lispectors um if you're going to start with a shorter Clarice Lispector, because a lot of Clarice Lispector is, basically all of her books are quite short, I think this is, in my opinion, the short one to start with, as opposed to, for instance, The Hour of the Star. I don't necessarily recommend starting with, personally. Um, it is what I started with, but I kind of like this one more. More on Clarice Lispector, so, kind of dealing with water, because the, you know, Moby Dick. I'm not recommending Moby Dick, which is very obviously not a short book, but I am going to recommend Bartleby the Scrivener by Melville. I've talked about this earlier this year. Uh, I read it, reread it uh, at the beginning of January. Um, it's about a law clerk. Um, it's very, very short. It's basically somewhere between a short story and a novella. I'm fiddling with my bangs a lot, sorry. Um, it is about a law clerk working on Wall Street and who is very bizarre and impossible to read and he stops doing his job, basically. I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, it's a very weird story that remains very, very modern um, in terms of what it's dealing with. A lot of urban melancholy, loneliness, lack of vision, the grind of capitalism, you know, stuff that we are dealing with 150 years later very much, so it seems prescient. I'm going to recommend Sula by Toni Morrison. This is about two women who grew up together as girls, their paths diverge. One of them grows up to be a pillar of her community, a proper woman in the community, while the other is this kind of semi-reviled town witch. And while their paths have diverged, they kind of come back together. They share a lot of history, obviously. Um, I love Toni Morrison. Again, if you watch my channel, you know that I love Toni Morrison. You also know that I specifically love this one. If you've never read Toni Morrison, I recommend this one as a really, really good starter because it's short and it's impeccably written as all of her books are. The, her writerly voice is just incredible. And I, this is a really good introduction to Morrison. If you want another very short book. I will also recommend Restatif, which is really just a short story that was published as its standalone short book. It has an introduction by Sadie Smith. 
um, when it was reissued, I think two years ago, I think it's 2021. I read that last year as well and loved it. It's also about two women um, whose paths are kind of coming in and out of one another. One is white, one is black, and you never know which is which really in Morrison's story. It's really, it puts you in a position as a reader to constantly be making assumptions of as to which character is stereotypically or readably one versus the other. So it's a very interesting exercise. And finally, The Prime of Mystery and Brody by Muriel Spark. It's a very delightful book, as Spark's books are in general in my experience. This is about a uh, young woman, not that young, actually I can't remember how young or not she is, but I think young-ish, um, who is who starts up as a teacher at a girls' school. So we've got a lot of uh, thematics here, I've realized in um, my picks. This was also made into a movie starring um, Maggie Smith, which is pretty delightful as well. Some various hijinks, weird British culture, at least from my vantage. Um, and yeah, it's both very funny and charming and witty and a little also kind of horrifying in its own ways. So those are my recommendations for you. Quickly, I want to talk about, ideally quickly, some of the books that I am planning to read. I will not go into what they're about, but some of them I don't really know. I'm currently reading, speaking of Clarissa Spector, The Passion According to G.H. I still have never read this one and I'm really looking forward, well actually I'm already really enjoying it. I've read about a third of it um, and I'm enjoying, no not enjoying, I'm looking forward to reading more of it and it's great. I think I'm going to revisit Borges Fictions. Um, this made it into my favorite books of all time. So I've already read these, but I haven't read them in a long time. And I think this month is the month. Speaking of short stories, I think I'm going to try to read some short stories this month. I haven't been able to get into short stories more recently. And um, yeah, I want to attempt to read some more. I put out a call for recommendations on Instagram and got a truly horrifying number of responses. Thank you very much to everybody who did respond. I will try to sift through those and I will definitely, I have, I have them all. I will definitely go back to them. Um, but of course, as I knew I would be, I got super overwhelmed by all the responses. We'll see how many I get to. Elizabeth Bowen, Friends, yeah, Friends and Relations. I have, I don't know anything about this book, but I have liked Elizabeth Bowen in the past, so I might read this. Truman Capote, Breakfast at Tiffany's. I've never read this. I happen to have it. I found it on the street a little while ago. This is also a movie. I don't think I have it in me to rewatch that movie. I don't know. I may or may not get to this. This is definitely one I think I want to get to. Notes on Suicide by Simon Critchley. I mentioned it in a birthday book haul and I think this month is the month for it. Things I have never read before. The Yellow Wallpaper by uh, Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Classic horror story, classic feminist horror story. Um, yeah, this could be the month I read it or maybe into spooky season of October. The Dry Heart by Natalia Ginsberg. I also would recommend The Little Virtues, which was also part of my uh, the same vlog as um, Days of Abandonment. No, not Days of Abandonment, excuse me, Sweet Days of Discipline. Um, from about a month ago. Really loved that Ginsberg. Really looking forward to reading more. So I think I will probably read this this month as well. 
Sleepless Nights by Elizabeth Hardwick. I think I'm not gonna like this. <laughs> um, I've had it for several years. I know that Hardwick is an important figure in New York literary scene, American literary scene. I also know that this is not a splendid book um, based on a lot of other people's reactions, but I might finally, I'm not, you know, a glutton for punishment or anything, but I think I might finally read it. We'll see. Uh, Raymond Queneau, Exercice de style. I am actually already well through part of this. I am working on this uh, with a French student of mine. Uh, it is the same story told 99 times. Uh, so it's the same really, really short story told with 99 different conceits. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's translated into English, I don't know how it works translated into English, but it's been very fun. More short stories and books that I found on the street a while ago, Lori Moore, Birds of America. Um, yeah, this is one that I know I sh should get into, so I'm gonna try. And in a similar vein, 10th of December, yes, December by George Saunders. So big, giant, well-loved um, short story collections that I know are good and also have been recommended to me. We'll see. I don't know if I'll read the full collection, if I'll dip into it. But yeah, maybe this is finally the month I give these a shot. And finally, or almost finally, I'll mention that I plan to read Sarah Bernstein's um, Study for Obedience, I think. I'll put up the book. Uh, it's currently longlisted for the Booker Prize. It's basically the only book I'm interested in that list, or one of the only books, and I currently have it out as an ebook from the library, so I actually do have to get to it quite soon. I think it's going to be my next book. And finally, and my physical books, um, How to Loiter in a Turf War by Coco Solid. I picked this up because it was so heartily recommended by Renee of uh, So I Read This Book, and she has really loved this. She's mentioned it a few times. It's I think it has been one of her favorite books of the first half of the year, and she has good taste, so I wanted to pick it up too. All right, those are books I know and recommend, books I don't know so much and recommend to myself. And yeah, have a good September. Ciao!